Deep section wheels. They look bling, they make a cool swooshing noise, and most importantly, they offer a significant aerodynamic benefit over a standard shallow box section rim. But many people are worried about riding them in crosswinds, and for good reason. When they suddenly catch the wind and unexpectedly twist the handlebars, it can feel scary, and in some cases, downright dangerous. But just how bad a problem is it? In this video, we're gonna look at deep section wheels versus crosswinds. We're using some of Zip's range of wheels to illustrate this because they're one of our sponsors, but also because they've actually spent huge amounts of resources in trying to develop wheels that are easier to handle in really windy conditions. But many of the points in this video apply to other wheel brands too. One of the reasons why we're tackling this subject is because disc brakes are encouraging people to use carbon wheels more often. If you ride rim brakes in, well, dirty roads like what we have today, then you can trash your carbon rims quite easily. But if you remove that, then there's no real disincentive not to use carbon wheels all year, apart from the initial outlay. But that considered, if your go-to wheel is a deep section wheel, then you wanna be able to run it all the time. So the question is, can you? Fundamentally, deep section wheels can feel more unstable because they present a larger surface area to the wind. Now, this is worse on the front than it is on the back because the front wheel can turn. It's first important to understand what makes a deep section wheel feel unstable. So, here is some science. As you ride, the tyre is the leading edge, and this splits the air. The rim then controls the airflow, helping it to smoothly come together at the trailing edge behind the rim. Now, the idea here is that this reduces drag and makes you faster for the same effort. Now, this tends to work fine when the wind is at naught to one degrees of yaw, which means head on. However, when your angles start to increase, such as in a crosswind, problems can arise. At higher yaw angles, the airflow can suddenly detach from the rim, and this causes a sudden drop in pressure and turbulence forming. And an area of low pressure behind the rim effectively sucks it backwards, which is not ideal. And this kind of aerodynamic stall is a similar concept to that in aeroplane wings, except the difference is that when an aeroplane wing stalls, it falls out the sky. When a wheel stalls, you feel that twitch or the sensation of it catching the wind. This is disconcerting, potentially dangerous, and it slows you down. This isn't my time trial bike, but use your imagination. Because in my experience of riding time trials with a deep section front wheel, whenever I felt instability because of the wind, I'd often find myself coming off my tri bars and subsequently becoming less aero. And it doesn't have to be a big gust either. Little twitches here and there can momentarily cause you to soft pedal. And in some cases, even freewheel. On a windy day, these little twitchy events can actually be very frequent and add up to a significant amount of time. But perhaps the worst thing that can happen is you will get blown off your bike entirely. Now, admittedly, this isn't very common, but it can happen. And famously, Geraint Thomas, the Tour de France champion, was blown off his bike at Ghent Vevelgem in 2015. It can also mean that in windy conditions, a deep section wheel isn't necessarily faster than a shallow one and can, in actual fact, be slower. Plus, it's kind of nice not having the sensation that you're going to get blown off your bike at any moment. Although deep section wheels can be twitchy in the wind, it's not as bad a problem as you might think. Now, for reference, I'm around 70 kilograms and would ride a mid-depth 40 to 60 millimetre wheel all year round. Now, the reason for this is primarily aero gains because, well, I'm all about the aero and need all the help I can get, but also because it's manageable. Wheel design has improved so much over the last few years that they're much easier to ride than the older V-shaped designs. 
Back in day, when deep sections first started to appear, they had a V section profile. Now this was really good at naught degrees yaw, but not as aerodynamic at other yaw angles. Yaw being the engineering term for the angle of the wind. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? It was only in the 2000s. You can lose the black and white and the flat cap. In reality, when you're riding in the real world, the yaw angle of the wind is very rarely zero, meaning head on. It's often coming from all different angles all around you and it's constantly changing. Fortunately, wheel designers realized this and started to design rims accordingly. Not all rims are created equal. And the next big step in the evolution of deep section wheels was the use of wider and rounded toroidal shaped rims. Now in 1996, a patent co-owned by Head and Zip allowed for toroidal rim sections, which in non-maths geekery terms is, well, U-shaped. Most wheel brands went on to adopt similar shapes, owing to it being more aerodynamically stable and less prone to crosswinds because it allows for higher angles of stall. Over the last 20 years or so, the toroidal rim profile has been tweaked and honed to improve it incrementally in the crosswinds. And that has led us to these hyperfoils. The idea here is that the multiple bumps or nodes on the 454, but also the 858, allow multiple locations for high frequency vortex shedding. What on earth is that, I hear you ask? <laughs> well, in simple terms, rather than let the pressure build up and then dump all that air in one big stall, which would cause a massive twitch, the wheel is said to be constantly dumping smaller amounts of air in sort of micro stalls. Now, according to Zip, this makes the wheel much easier to handle, yet still retaining the equivalent straight line speed. The theory is that you can ride more deep wheels more of the time. Interesting. Should you get a pair of deep section rims? And if so, what depth should you go for? Well, ultimately it comes down to your needs and what you want them for. And we're not for one second suggesting that you have to get a pair of deeps either. There's nothing wrong with a standard aluminium box section rim, but you can rest assured that with advancements in design, deep section wheels have become a lot easier and safer to handle in crosswinds, meaning you can run them, well, potentially all year round. However, we should still point out, they can still be more of a handful, although much improved, than a shallow rim. If I was selecting a wheel for time trials, then I'd go for a deep 70 to 80 millimeter front wheel on, well, all but the windiest of days. However, if I was only gonna own one set of deep section wheels, then I'd go for a mid depth around 40 to 50 millimeters. This is because this is a depth I know that I feel comfortable riding pretty much all of the time. And if it was too windy to ride that kind of wheel, I feel that, well, it would be too windy to ride full stop, irrespective of the wheels you are riding. It's also a really versatile depth, whereas something like the 858, although it's very fast, is a little more specialized. There is a caveat though. Now, while I'm comfortable riding a 303 or a 404 depth wheel in most conditions, smaller, lighter riders can suffer in crosswinds more. So if you're diminutive, you may want to consider getting a shallower wheel, especially at the front, because at the front, you have less weight over the wheel to stop it twitching. Also, if you happen to live in the windiest place on earth and, well, plan on riding lots there, then you may also want to get shallower wheels. Incidentally, the windiest place on earth is, uh, well, it's, it's Mount Everest. Uh, I fact-checked it. I hope you found this video useful and informative, and if you have, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to watch another video, I highly recommend this one, where Sai sees just how fast aero wheels can be. It's down here. <laughs>